Welcome back everyone again. I'm here today with David Tobin. We're on the Franklin Club podcast, but he wants to call it something else. What do you want to I want to call it the podcast at the Franklin Club. Okay, drop your comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, drop your comments below. Do you want this to be Franklin Club, Franklin WH Club? Or the podcast at the Franklin Club. Uh, it's up to you. Anyway, so uh, today's topic, actually, sorry, intro. We're going to tell you who, who David Tobin actually is. Yeah, you got to like say, <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to give me a better intro? Yeah, no, I live in the Houston area, so I'm technically the... Uh, I'm a Midwestern product manager, but my official title is key account technical lead. So today's topic is all about the A-gate. And so before we dive into the nuances between what are the changes that are going on with our new A-gate, let's talk about what actually the A-gate is. Do you want to explain that to the audience? Yeah, who may not so be familiar? our A-gate is um, in common terms is a, a gateway or a microgrid interconnect device. So you have your utility feed that comes in. Um, you also land your solar battery and you can also land generators, portable or uh, full standby. We can, we can charge our batteries from it. So it gives you a true resiliency off grid. All the magic happens in our gateway. It also contains the cellular connection and the controller, uh, what we call the EMS, energy management system for the batteries. So. It's also got all our built-in CTs. CTs is where we measure the power flow um, coming in from your solar, your generator, grid, and our batteries kind of have their own built-in CTs. <laughs> so I take pride in how robust our system is. There have been a lot of incremental changes since we hit the market. And so I want to talk about the key differences between what did that product look like back in 2022 versus now? Yeah, um, so the functionality is the same. It's still a microgrid interconnect device. Um, a lot of the changes has made it easier for our installers and also added some extra functionality uh, for the homeowner as well. Some of the changes for our installation partners is we opened up both sides of the A-gate for allowing you to kind of bring in your conduit and your wires. And we used to have like these, uh, our grid and the solar CTs, there's um, acro meters that went in the bottom right that we, we were to move into our EMS. So now that stuff is built in, you used to have basically a smaller footprint and more room to work with inside the same size A-gate. Also has Bluetooth. So why, why is this important? Bluetooth is such a, you know, a very short radio distance. It doesn't go far. So when you are commissioning the system, you can directly connect via Bluetooth instead of a Wi-Fi hotspot. Why is this important? It allows your phone to stay connected to the homeowner's Wi-Fi. That way, if you need to like look at like data live, you can maintain your data connection via Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. but also commissioning the system via Bluetooth. Yeah, um, so. or if you're off-grid. Oh yeah, yeah. off-grid. So off you might have to bring like a SpaceX or any sort of like hotspot, um, or even just do it all over cellular. So if you're on cellular, you want to make sure you maintain that uh, data connection, and then you just go over to data. But it has, but this hasn't really been a problem um, on our first-gen product. No, no, not at all. But, but we give an extra flexibility and Bluetooth radios are cents on the dollar. So oh, why not add it? Yep. Do you want to start me off with the, since we already covered a little bit, let's talk a little bit more in depth about the smart circuits if you didn't cover anything. Yeah. So our smart circuits um, on the first gen, um, basically it has a built-in relay that you can turn on and off um, those loads. Typically you would want to have your installer size your batteries, solar and everything appropriately and then you put some of your heavy loads like your EV charger, air conditioning compressor, uh, things are like 50, 70 amps continuous. So on the first gen smart circuits, you can actually set, I only want it to operate during a certain time period, or you can also um, have it to shed automatically. And then the other cool feature was, oh, I'm down to 20% um, state of charge. Basically it's like your cell phone, if you hit 20%, start getting that red icon. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have the red icon. No. Maybe we should have the red icon. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy software thing. Yeah, yeah. super easy to fix, but yeah. um, you can have it shed at um, a designated SOC. Um, that way- State of charge. State of charge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, shed at 20% or whatever percent you choose. That yeah. way you can like, I don't need AC, but I definitely want to keep the, all the popsicles in the freezer frozen. So with that, now we can measure how many kilowatts are flowing through there, how many kilowatt hours has been used up by whatever you um, place there. Um, so now you can do extra functionality. You can have it to where it can talk or look at how many kilowatts of solar you're producing. You can have things turn on and off, all things that we can easily add via software. So 
with this hardware, we basically add extra functionality. But currently, yeah, you can say if this load goes over uh, five or six kilowatts, I want it to shed. Mm -hmm. um, if it uses up 10 or 15 kilowatt hours, I also want it to shed, especially if you're off grid and you got like two batteries, use up one battery's worth of power, you're like, ooh, I need to save that other battery for um, some more important stuff like TV. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. And so one thing um, that we haven't really touched upon, and, and maybe we have another podcast, but we just launched our app 2.0. And so all these things that David's talking about is you can control it within your app. And it's much yeah. more intuitive and user friendly to, to make those changes and you know alter the smart circuits and whatever else you want to accomplish. Yeah. And then that kind of gives us into uh, the generator module. Yep. So it'll actually give you 220 volt leads, L1, L2. Mm -hmm. um, that way you can control either an automatic transfer switch known as an ATS, or you can also have it directly hooked into your generator controller that if it loses our, our fake utility that we give it, when we turn that off, it'll actually start the generator. So we kind of trick the generator and it comes with built-in exercise function. You program it for like a Saturday at 1 p.m. That way you can sleep in. That's great. I love it. <laughs> so in trying to improve the experience for installers, uh, most typical installs, you typically don't need some of these extra parts. Like yep. um, you don't need generator module in every case. Sometimes you don't need a smart circuit module in every case. Yep. But we have these optional accessories to where you can, all right, I do need it. Let me just add that to the cost. Otherwise we are trying to help save our homeowners and installers uh, money. Absolutely. Cash money is super important in today's economy. Um, one of those accessories is the backup extension lug. So mm -hmm. in our old A gate, we kind of included dual backup ports, but with in trying to improve, like allowing you to land like a CSR breaker there, we just kind of left those out since typically you only need those if you're installing uh, three or more batteries. Mm -hmm. So with those, you would have like your battery combiner panel where you land like your solar and land your batteries. I'm hoping someone will actually puts like a nice little graphic up. He's trying to make more work for me. I don't want to <laughs> Marketing, do graphics. Marketing, get to work. And, yeah, to, yeah. Anyway, keep but going. Yeah, keep going. so you have like a, a production panel where you can land like um, excess solar via an AP box and all your extra yeah. batteries. And then you would feed that onto the backup extension lugs because then the other port would then go to your 200 amp whole home panel. Uh, since the WH in Franklin is whole, whole home. home. <laughs> <laughs> and that actually brings us to the Black Start Relay. So you're kind of asked, probably thinking to yourself, what do you mean Black Start Relay? Does that mean we are taking away Black Start if I don't get this relay? But no, that's not, not the yeah. case. Um, this is kind of an enhancement to the Black Star. So every Franklin system, if you were to drain your battery when you're off grid during a multi-day outage, yep. our system at 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 2 o'clock will actually initiate a Black Star. Essentially, it will power up all the loads and basically keep the loads lit for about five minutes due to the NEC minimum for solar to wait for um, hey, I got technical the, code stuff. Yeah. So yeah. you have basically, you got to keep the whole system lit for about five minutes before the solar start producing. Part of the problem is people forget that they left the stove on or yeah. they start, oh, I got power. Let me start putting something in the microwave. Remember, you only have uh, a limited amount of power. So you got to hope that you can get to um, the five minutes, get enough solar. And if you're, it's cloudy, your solar may not be enough to actually overcome like your home loads and it will have a failed black start. Yep. Luckily we do it again at 12 o'clock and two o'clock and we'll send you alerts like, Hey, please power off some loads. Um, but with the black start relay, we actually can automatically disconnect your load panel. That way it shunts all the solar straight to the battery. Mm -hmm. And once it reaches about 15% SOC, we then activate your home loads again. So yeah. now you're back up and you have at least 15% power and you can manage your loads from there. Trust our homeowners to kind of manage the loans because you can kind of see everything. You can act on things that you can see, so. Thus unlocking energy freedom. So that's yeah. the whole goal here. When should someone actually use more than one A-gate? Oh, yeah. Typically we only see multiple A-gates when you have a 400, 600. I've actually seen it as much of an 800 amp residential service. Um, we're wow. talking, it's a, it's a, it's a big, house. big, big <laughs> home. The bus bar in our A-gate has 280 amps of pass-through. 
So what does that mean? Uh, it means you can land your solar, land your batteries on our A-gate and not have to worry about main panel upgrades. Yep. So you should actually have two A-gates for a 400 amp service. You have one A-gate for one 200 amp panel, another for the second one. But remember, these are two separate systems because when you lose the grid, these will isolate. They're not connected to each other. So each A-gate will have its own batteries, its own solar feed, and then it'll basically kind of feed those batteries. There's been some talk about looking into like power sharing. We are looking into that. And so that might be something to where when you've got an off-grid system and you've got an off-grid with 600 amp service, that would be very useful. It's nice that we have that flexibility. But in the app, you can actually have it so these two or three A gates are at the same household. And so you can have it to where the app will show it as one system. That way you're not looking or flipping through mm -hmm. multiple A gates. So our app gives us the, the freedom to kind of look at the yep. big picture. So we also integrate, we have a, a few partners out there. So we have talked about smart circuits, but for those of, uh, who may want to know all the energy insights into all of their electrical loads, there's, we have partnerships with SPAN and Lumen. Yep. When would someone want to use something like that? Yeah, so obviously like we want to like, you know, use our smart circuits, but we kind of kept it relatively small because most of the cases you only have like one air conditioning and maybe like a pool pump or you might have three air conditioning systems. So you put two on the smart circuits to shed and you just kind of choose one that you want to run off grid. But when you want to like really have like a smart home, I'm um, thinking back to the Disney Channel uh, smart home with the AI holographic mom. I'll have to animate something on screen <laughs> for that one. <laughs> uh, but with, with a smart home like that, yeah. you can use like a Lumen or a smart or a span smart panel. So those CTs, we should uh, pull them out. So think of that as having a CT on every one of your circuit breakers. So if the kids are got like a computer and you happen to know that um, circuit breaker that powers that computer, it's 10 o'clock, they should be, turn it off. You're like, oh, I see a little power. I know that's that's their little laptop. Sorry, little Jimmy. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. Yeah. Well, a laptop, they'd be fine for a little bit, but yeah. yeah, yeah Hopefully you got them an old one that, you, you know, 30 minutes of battery life. You can hit the router, <laughs> turn off the router. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I mean, the app is very intuitive. You can, if you're a tinker and you just want to be like, okay, what's going on today with my, you know, I want to check out my energy usage analytics or, you know, just high level. You can log into the app, see what's going on in real time. But if you want to tinker around and go into like a more advanced mode, you can really dive in and start to alter yeah. the settings in a way that's totally customized for you. I know personally, I'm kind of like that nerd that would actually go into the customized things. <laughs> <laughs> so we've covered a lot of information today. And so I want to take this back for the people who may have a short attention span like, like me. <laughs> what would be the final takeaways, just to recap, or what are the ba main differences, just real quick for the audience, AGA Gen 1 versus AGA Gen 2, like what we have today? Yeah, so the big changes that I would say from Gen 1 to Gen 2, uh, Bluetooth connection for installers, yeah. and potentially we could open that up for homeowners in case they want to do a direct connect when you might lose the entire internet after a major disaster. So that's a big feature that comes with Gen 2, Black Start Relay or Enhanced Black Start Relay. That way, if you have like a one or two battery system, you could make sure that you have a clean startup every morning. We also have a vehicle to load capability via our generator module. That is something that we're looking to launch. We're basically increasing the list of compatible electric vehicles that yep. have that. And then smarter smart circuits, kind of a little <laughs> it's no, it got a little sense. weird, but yeah, yeah it makes sense. They're, a little, they're a little more intelligent because now you have yeah. the built-in CTs and then also the more optional parts. That way you can kind of right size the A gate that you need for your particular customer. Awesome. Thank you everyone for attending this session. Thank you for being on. No, thank you. Stay tuned for the next episode and we'll have David Tobin back to talk about our A power. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs>